If you're able, please stand. <laughs> oh Lord, open my lips. Oh 
from Isaiah chapter 9. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us the child is born, to us the son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from Romans chapter 12. But love be genuine, abhor what is evil, Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for by so doing you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. If you're able, please stand. A reading from Matthew chapter 10. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In his days, in Israel will dwell securely. This is the 
sermon this evening is our is our peace rests on him alone taken at least in part from the Old Testament lesson from Isaiah chapter 9 well by now I imagine that most of you have your plans for Christmas in place this being the 20th already of December the 25th isn't very far away at all anymore. And if you're the one hosting Christmas dinner, or maybe in the past you hosted Christmas dinner, you know how much work goes into that. You have to figure out or find out who's coming. Um, 
How are they going to get there? When are they going to get there? Is anyone going to be sleeping over at your home? You need to make other arrangements. Of course, most important of all is what are you going to have for dinner? And then how are you going to make sure that all those different diets and dietary needs are, are met? Um, allergies or food issues or other things that people unfortunately have to deal with these days. Well, not that I've really ever done it, to be honest. <laughs> but I've seen others do it. I've seen my wife do it on, on occasion. Planning a big Christmas dinner like that sure involves a lot of work. And of course, in order for the dinner to be successful, you have to make sure that everybody gets there at not only the right place, but also at the right time. You, you perhaps have those family members or friends who like to arrive a half hour early. You're busy doing the last little bit of housekeeping, dusting or putting things away, the doorbell rings, and, and here they are. Or maybe you have some others who think one o'clock means three o'clock. And don't forget what happened last time, and I'm just making up names, but when Cousin Sue sat next to Uncle Frank. So you've got to ensure you have the seating uh, chart planned accordingly. As an aside, this is one reason I kind of like being a pastor. It's a very busy time for me too, although in a different way, especially this year with Christmas Eve falling on a Sunday. So as I mentioned, this past Sunday, we've got three services and about 24 hours to get ready for. So I keep busy too. And so I can't really go anywhere for Christmas, whether it's this year or any year, because well, I'm not here. But that's okay, because, because come Christmas Day afternoon, when I get home, I can take a nice nap with my kitty Louie. Well, regardless of what you have planned, for many of us, Christmas is busy, to say the least. And because it's so busy, we can feel a need for a sense of control. We think that peace might come if we can just get everything organized. Whether for me, it's getting all the services prepared, and Janet, of course, is a real big help with that. So I can get everything done on time and so I can breathe a little bit and not have to scramble at the last minute. Or whether it's for you, it's preparing to host that Christmas dinner, making sure everything is there, and everyone gets there at the right time. Or maybe, you know, I know some of our folks have left already, but maybe you're planning to go somewhere for Christmas. So you've got to get the car packed. And you've got to make sure you have everything. Don't forget your car charger. And if you're going to fly somewhere, then you got that whole airplane, airline, and airport stuff to deal with. This time of year can kind of feel like a, one of those circus ringmasters who's directing the jugglers and the acrobats and the lions and the bears and the elephants trying to keep everything going. We wonder, if only people would listen to us and do what we suggest, then there would be peace. Maybe this is the hope of every Christmas, I mean, every grandmother who's hosting Christmas dinner. Is this wanting a sense of control? Finding control, having control as a way to find peace. That's what I'd like to talk with you about a little bit this evening. Well, again, to manage all our stress and all our plans, we think that we need to take control. And if we just had that control, if everything was just the way we planned it, then we would have peace. Besides, isn't it reasonable to assume that God would help us in this? I mean, after all, doesn't God want us to get along? And at least through one weekend or one Christmas dinner, 
peace would reign? After all, isn't that the very name of the child whose birth we will soon be celebrating? Jesus, the Prince of Peace. As we heard in tonight's reading from Isaiah, for to us the child is born, to us the son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Whenever I hear those verses, I think it was Handel's Messiah, they sing those beautiful words. Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Wouldn't it be fitting that the celebration of his birth be celebrated in peace? Besides elsewhere in scripture, we hear this call for peace too. For example, in Hebrews chapter 12, it reads, Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. And St. Paul in our reading from Romans for tonight says, If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So I guess the question becomes, can we bring enough control over our world so that we finally have peace? If yes, then control not only of our calendar, but also of others can become our purpose, our way in which we try to find and gain peace. But how does this really work? Does it work? No, not really. Not very well. And so we get frustrated. When we are so busy getting ready for Christmas or whatever else it might be, maybe it's preparing for a wedding or some other occasion, we might in frustration ask ourselves, why am I doing all this? It takes so much work. Why even bother? My friends, if you're wondering that, it's time to find true peace and purpose. What will be enough for you to give you and me meaning in all that has yet to be done before Christmas? Well, my friends, thanks be to God that he stops our frantic pursuit for control and purpose. For peace isn't found in our tight grasp of the calendar or in trying to control the actions of others. Peace isn't found in our plans. Rather, again, peace comes through the Prince of Peace. It's his, it's his kingdom that brings peace, and his work as the wonderful counselor and mighty God that gives order to our world. If we try to seek peace by means of control, Jesus shows us another control. In our gospel lesson for tonight, from Matthew 10, Jesus asks that we expect him to bring peace. And at first blush, somewhat surprisingly, he says that he came to bring not peace, but a sword. He came to set two against three, and three against two. He came to divide family members against one another. It's because he came not to bring worldly peace, the peace that comes through faith in him and in him alone. People have to decide whether they will believe in Jesus as their Prince of Peace or not. Well, this is the very opposite of the world's goals of control and outward peace. Too often, we want the peace that comes from getting everyone to agree with us even if it's just briefly or superficially so that we can get through Christmas dinner without any fights or arguments. No talking about politics or religion at the dinner table, we decree. And that's going to be tough this year, I think. But that's another topic. But what brings true peace to our world and to our lives? Jesus. Jesus brings peace by stepping into the middle of our troubled world and letting himself become the center of the world's anger. In that center, he brings us peace through his cross. 
Peace has come through what seems to be chaos. Being the Prince of Peace, His peace has endured for thousands of years. Our best plans sometimes won't even make it through one meal, let alone one day. But His peace, His kingdom, is without end. He comes as the wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, so that His peace might reign over the world. Jesus gives us a new purpose and a new peace. Peace doesn't rest on our plans and control. God's peace doesn't come by our attempts to control others. Rather, peace comes by hearing His Word, His Word that controls us. No, we might not be able to get everyone to the Christmas dinner at the right time and place. Our plans might not be fulfilled. Our ham or turkey may not come out the way we wanted it to. People may not listen to our pleas for peace and are squabbling as we try to have dinner. That's okay that our plans aren't fulfilled. For Jesus teaches us not to focus on our plans, but on His. The plans that in fact have come true. It's like the story of our Christmas gifts. When we were little, we simply wanted the gift. Those gifts that were underneath the Christmas tree. But when we became older, it was the story behind the gift that mattered. It was hearing how long someone searched for that perfect gift so it was just the right color or the right size. Or maybe how that gift was kept so perfectly hidden in the house for months, even though the children were looking for it. And then later you can tell that story about how you hid that gift from them for so long. The gift was good, but it was the story behind it that was the key. Likewise, we find God's gift in the simplicity of a manger and a newborn baby. But the key to peace is hearing the story of how He made our peace. He built it by the straw of the manger and the wood and nails of the cross. He made that peace through the ages of promise and the waiting of His coming. The gift of the Prince of Peace came by the perfect planning of God who arranged the world for the birth of his Son, who came in the fullness of time. And so the gift of peace has come through the birth of the child, the Son of God, Jesus. The Prince of Peace has come with his gift of peace, and the story of that peace lives on. What will bring us peace when so many of our plans are still undone? We find our peace rests not in our work, but in Him, in following Him, the Prince of Peace. He filled the manger and the cross. That's where we find peace. Peace rests on Him, and we rest in faith in all that He has done for us. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you're able, please stand for the singing of the canticle.
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our dwelling place and our peace, you have compassion on our weakness. Put far from us all worry and fearfulness, that having confessed our sins, and commending ourselves to your gracious mercy, we may, when night shall come, commit ourselves, our work, and all we love into your keeping, receiving from you the gift of quiet sleep. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated for our final. Hymn. 